This episode of Hunting in the Sticks is brought to you by Kansas 811. Always call before you dig. This week on Hunting in the Sticks, we're going to jump into the deer season with Gary Rimmers and his daughter Natalie. These two spent plenty of time in Kentucky chasing whitetails, and Gary even took time to head to Colorado and do some mule deer hunting. The question is, can they put two big bucks on the ground in two different states? Hunters are ordinary people with an extra ingredient. It makes us work harder, longer, smarter. We do things most won't. To experience something most never will. Hello, my name is Mark Stowe, and welcome to this week's episode of Hunting in the Sticks. You know, there's nothing more gratifying or satisfying than spending time with your kids in the outdoors. And for the hit squad member, Gary Rimmers, he's been spending that time with his daughter, Natalie. Today, we're gonna follow them on their journey together throughout last year's deer hunting season. As far back as I can remember, my dad's always taken me along with him and taught me about the outdoors. And you know something? He's taught me a ton about hunting, and I think I've gotten pretty good at it. It's 52 degrees out here. We got about 20 mile an hour winds. I'm not sure how many deer we're gonna see today, but uh, hopefully um, we're gonna see something that these girls can put a good shot on with the crossbow arrows. Natalie, that's what we're looking for right there. A little bit of an adjustment and bingo, good shot. Thanks. Ready to, Ready to shoot some deer. <laughs> so you just get your strap like this. There you go. So you clip in, and that's all there is to it. See? Okay. When that doe started walking into range, my heart was about to beat out of my chest. But as always, my dad was sitting there coaching me through it and telling me to focus on the shot. Shot there, Nat. 
Did I hit her? Yeah, you hit her. You sure? Yeah, I'm you made a great shot. All right, crew, let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Renegade Steel Buildings is a nationally recognized supplier of the highest quality steel buildings and steel building accessories. Whether you're looking to build a new commercial building or a storage building on your property, Whatever your steel building needs may be, Renegade offers the expertise and solution. To receive a hassle-free quote and brochure, call 1-877-363-4233 or visit us online at renegadebuildings.com. The Ramcat is the next step in Broadhead Evolution. Its stealth body and blade design allow it to easily outperform its competition in accuracy, penetration, and cut diameter. It's the only broadhead on the market with a back cut, allowing the broadhead to rotate forward and cut its way back out. Listen to the exit, exit, exit. Louisiana One Call hopes you enjoy hunting in the sticks. We want to remind you that whether you're planting a tree, building a fence, or just making improvements around your farm or home, calling 811 will get your work area marked so you can avoid contact with buried lines as you work. You owe it to yourself and your loved ones to dig safely. Know what's below. Call before you dig. For more information, visit us online at la1call.com. Hunting in the Sticks is brought to you by 811. Know what's below. Call before you dig. Steady form. Ramcat broadheads. And Denali rods. We would also like to thank these 811 partners. Gary Rimmers and his daughter Natalie are starting their deer season off in Kentucky doing some crossbow hunting. With a mature doe walking into range, the moment of truth has arrived. What do you think, Natalie? It's exciting. <laughs> Another half hour. How's the heart pounding? How's your heart rate? Heart rate's at a high speed right now. Plus, I'm freezing, so I was either shaking. That'll warm me up. Yeah, that'll warm me up. I'm pretty good, but she so exciting. All right, we're Let's go find the deer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That grass. Got a lot of the blood. Oh, yeah. Can't find any blood right now, so. Mm -hmm. well, there's blood on the arrow. There's blood on the arrow, but I s we're not finding any blood. Maybe we're just looking in the wrong place, but. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep looking. Well, the, prob the problem we have here is just the lack of blood. I don't know what the heck. I mean, you can see, I'll show you the video here. Yeah. And it just looked like a great shot. You guys had a hang with okay. the blood. Right here. Hold on, right here. Okay. Right there on the That's why you gotta get a lot of eyes. Oh my god, that's a freaking big old doe right there now. Uh, I didn't realize how big you were. Uh, I didn't think it was that big. Yay! <laughs> really does feel like your heart's just gonna pop out of your chest. Yeah, I can feel that. I can feel that. Woo! Woo! We made it. Oh, that wasn't that hard. Let's try to not be super. Let's try to 
Jerry and Natalie wrapped up their early season in Kentucky with a little dough management. Shortly after that, Gary headed to Colorado to the Eastern Plains to do a little mule deer hunting. I just love hunting out west. And this new plains area we're getting ready to hunt, I was really excited about it. This area is wide open, arid terrain and quite a challenging hunt. Our first order of business was to scout out this new area and see what was moving around out there. temperatures. Kansas 811 hopes you enjoy hunting in the sticks. We want to remind you that whether you're planting a tree, building a fence, or just making improvements around your farm or home, calling 811 will get your work area marked so you can avoid contact with buried lines as you work. You owe it to yourself and your loved ones to dig safely. Know what's below. Call before you dig. For more information, visit us online at kansasonecall.com. The steady form will increase your accuracy, confidence, and allow you to extend your range. The steady form is an essential tool for every bow hunter to help eliminate form breakdown when it counts the most. The steady form was designed to give your bow hand a consistent anchor point each and every time. We are hunting in the sticks. And we put our trust in the steady form torque eliminator. Steady form will increase your accuracy, confidence, and will allow you to extend your range guaranteed. Foundation for Hope is just that, what we consider the foundation. But we envision the Foundation for Hope giving these families and these children that have been stricken with life-challenging illnesses the hope, the rejuvenation, to go forward and fight the illnesses that they have. The adaptive equipment we have allows them to shoot their own rifle and harvest their own animals. It's truly incredible, the things that we can do. There are no limits. Over 15,000 products in stock from over 300 different manufacturers. We've got premium optics, scopes, binoculars, rangefinders, and more. Knives and tools from all the major brands. Cold Steel, CRKT, K-Bar, Spyderco, and more. Keep your guns safe with vaults from Hornady, Gun Vault, and more. Save 10% off your first order. Use coupon code PURSUIT at FirearmPros.com. Now it's time for your 811 Know What's Below Call Before You Dig viewer clip of the week. This week's clip was sent in by Terry Garrett with Rack 9 Outdoors in Georgia. That's what I'm talking about there. We made a great shot on it and the pig didn't run. 
he run about a four yard circle and just fell over. But they, I don't believe there's anything any better than pig hunting with your bow. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. If you'd like to see your video on hunting in the sticks, go to our website at huntinginthesticks.com and follow the directions. Gary Rimmers has traveled to Colorado to do some mule deer hunting on the Eastern Plains with a rifle. He and his guide, Travis, have spotted a nice buck and stalked within range in order to try to get a shot. After startling the buck, can Gary get a shot before the deer takes off for the next county? It's gonna be, hurry up. Oh, he's down. He's down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're cruising down this fence line right here, overlooking this large area of what, river bottom down here. We come up on two mule deer bucks. And since this is the first time uh, that we've been out here, Travis, it, it, you know, it's a decent, it's a decent buck. It's not a monster, but it's a good quality buck for this area. Baby. Now we're talking. Mule deer down. Here are frickin' man. Here are frickin' man. Here we go. This is my first Colorado mule deer. Shot a couple in Wyoming, never in Colorado. I've always been snake bit uh, with the mule deer in Colorado. I think our last Eastern Plains hunt when John and I came out here with Travis well, it was slim pickings. But then got a new piece of property scattered it out with what it has uh, produced. It has produced a nice, mature mule deer. That Colorado hunt was awesome. And what was amazing is that I was able to harvest that buck on the very first day of the hunt. You know, I no sooner got home from that hunt, unpacked my gear, and the very next day was the opening day of deer gun season in Kentucky. Well, Natalie, as usual, was very pumped about that opening morning. So I took her to her favorite stand and hoped that a shooter buck would come rolling by. Opening day of gun season, seeing about six different bucks, no does at all, all bucks. It's been crazy. A couple spikes, a couple medium-sized ones. Opening morning was just unbelievable with the amount of rut activity. Natalie and I saw about seven bucks that morning, but no shooters. But I knew with that kind of activity, those bucks will be back on their feet again that next morning as well. Now it's time for your safe digging moment of the week, brought to you by the legendary 811 bike. The Remmers father and daughter duo have been hunting hard all year. Natalie has harvested a doe in Kentucky and Gary has had good luck with mule deer in Colorado. Now it's time to try to get Natalie a buck in Kentucky. So these two bucks came in and the second one is a nice one. We spooked him a little bit and we weren't sure if he was still close to us or not, or if he walked out of our lives forever.
same stand. Do you think you hit him? I think I hit him. Oh my God. Holy smoke, oh, here. Oh my God, are you kidding me? That was a good one, wasn't it? I really hope it was, yeah, it was pretty I good. I hope you made a good shot now. Me too, it's all up to you. I don't know. His hawks were all black, and his neck was all puffed out, totally rotted out. We still shot, and there are deer still everywhere. Anyways, it's uh, about time to get out of the stand and go look for the steer now. Yes. All right, time to go find this boy. We shot him right in here somewhere. I think he went right. He went down this trail. I see him over there, Natalie. You see him? Oh. All right, come on. Let's get on him. Whoa. He's all gnarled Oh, up. my gosh. Oh, he's beautiful. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, pointer. Look at all the stuff coming off of his rack. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. Wow, look at that. Man, this is my biggest buck ever. It was pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty great thrill. It was, I don't know, what do I say? Well, it's a lot tougher than it looks to get those words out once that camera starts rolling. Finally, he's, what, what does he go around? All right, so here's what happened. I already said all that. I don't want to do it again. I mean, it's just a great size buck. Gotta suck. Yeah, that part can be a little rough sometimes. So here's what happened. First we hear some deer behind us, then I look around and see a small little eight pointer. Right behind that one was this guy. He looked at us and then got spooked a little bit. So ran over to the other side of the field and then came outside of the woods right in the middle of the field where I was able to shoot it. It's a little bit nervous, heart was racing a lot, but I could not be more happier about this buck. I mean, I'm super excited. Finally, Natalie got her buck, and I gotta tell you, I was one proud parent. As a father, I can appreciate these times in the outdoors with our children. It creates a lifetime of memories for these kids. We at Hunting in the Sticks encourage you to get your kids into the outdoors and create traditions that can last them a lifetime. Thanks for joining us this week on Hunting in the Sticks. And remember, safe digging is no accident. Call 811 before you dig. Hunting in the Sticks is brought to you by 811. Know what's below. Call before you dig. Steady form. Ram Cat Broadheads and Denali Rods. We would also like to thank these 811 partners. Closed captioning is brought to you by Flag Shooter. There's so many things, so many things on my body. I'm not this fat, I swear. Gary parted ways and headed to the wall. You gotta have to transition there. There's gotta be a segue there. Shortly after or, uh, you know. Yeah, trying to say what you're thinking gets a little rough. Hold on, stop. You're sending too many things in my head here. And scratching the head. Check, check, check. We're done. Clayton, we're done. It's a wrap.